What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's speak on it kind of fast. What's up, bro? Charlie Brown, anytime, Frank. Who always gets a notification. Don't forget to hit the like button, that's free. Thanks, Mr. Hogan's. Well, see, the same thing happened with Shaq and Pat Riley. A lot of people are out there very confused about what happened between LeBron and Pat Riley. Yep, so just like that. Happy New Year, Stephen Miller. Don't forget to hit the like button. Now, when when LeBron got there and signed the deal, they were supposed to renegotiate and LeBron was supposed to stay in Miami. That was the plan. Now, somewhere down the line, things went off script. LeBron wanted a lot of perks that he normally got in Cleveland. Now, this is word around the campfire. Another NBA player ratted him out that he had Rihanna spending time with Rihanna when he was in Miami and wanted to comp all this stuff for Rihanna which was against team rules a player who used to be on the heat who wasn't on the heat no more was very salty about this and ratted him out to Pat Riley word around the campfire So, this was not allowed. Like getting, like Rihanna needed like about, i say six to seven tickets for the people that she was bringing. And naturally LeBron was like, bet, you know, I can get you six to seven tickets. LeBron already had his tickets reserved. So for that game, he just needed some extras. Now, in an NBA, normal setting even michael jordan if he needed extra tickets especially out on the road he would have to talk to the other players and they had to get it from them even michael jordan they'd be like look you get two and that's that now Pat Riley and you know he nobody's above the rules. If Dwayne Wade has to follow these rules, LeBron James is gonna follow the same rules. That's how Pat Riley look at it. That's their star is Dwayne Wade. If Wade gotta follow these rules, 
I'm not going to give you a different set of rules than I'm giving Dwayne Wade. When Wade didn't been here, we drafted Wade. So if Wade got to follow this certain thing, you got to follow it too. So it wasn't like I'm picking on LeBron. And that's how Pat Riley's looking at it. Like, I'm not picking on LeBron. I have no problem with LeBron. This is this, the team rules. If you want some extra tickets more than what you want, you're going to have to talk to another teammate and see if they got some extras to give you. That's, that's how it happens. Don't ask the team. <laughs> Don't ask Pat Riley to make no exceptions in that situation. So when LeBron couldn't deliver on the extra tickets, he was livid. Wade was like, you know what? I got some extras here. He was like, I shouldn't have to do all that. You know, LeBron really felt like he was, like, I was supposed to have this special privilege. He was like, if I was in L.A., you think they'd have told Kobe Bryant? No. Yeah, my friends can't come to the games and I can't get no extra tickets. So LeBron was feeling a certain way with Pat Riley and wasn't talking to him directly no more like he used to. So the whole final season, LeBron was pouting. The whole fourth final year when they got beat up by the Spurs, That's right. So LeBron was hot about that. Now the problem and the beef didn't happen until LeBron was gone. Pat Riley and LeBron, you know, they agent, they you know, they came up with the offseason. They were gonna meet up and talk about re-signing back with the um, you know, he was gonna re-sign back with the Miami Heat. That was the intentions. <coughs> <clears throat> Pat Riley went there with the intentions of bringing LeBron back. LeBron never gave them the impression that he was leaving. This is why Pat Riley got really livid with LeBron James. LeBron James goes ahead and says to his team, like, oh yeah, yeah, we gonna yeah, we're gonna talk about getting back together. We're gonna sit down, they're gonna do their pitch to LeBron. And they're like, okay, great. LeBron had, had some business. I think he was training for the US A uh, Olympic team or something. So he was down in Vegas. So Pat Riley and you know his team, they all get on the plane and they fly down to Las Vegas to go meet with LeBron the way they had the meeting set up for LeBron and everything else so they go to the hotel room and they was going to sit there and negotiate everything LeBron wanted and, and all these different concessions that LeBron wanted and they wanted to talk about it and hash them all out and so they go in there and they was like oh well he's not here yet and this and that and they gave him a layout of what they wanted. And they was like, man, that sounds good. And and he just started to notice something. He's like, man, we've been sitting around for hours and LeBron's not even here. And you know, like, when is he coming? Like, oh, he should be here not too long ago. He had to go back to uh, Cleveland for something. And he's like, okay, well, he's like, yeah, he's flying back in town right now. He apologized, but you know, you can meet with us. And then he stopped and one of his guys from Pat Riley team was like, they went and had a, you know, talk amongst themselves and said, we're being played. He's like, what? He's like, we're being played. He's like, he's not coming. 
He said, what you mean? He's like, dude, he's not coming. He said, Mav Carter's not even here. And that's his business guy. We talking to Rich Paul <laughs> and the guy that carries his luggage. They look confused. They don't look like they understand anything that we're talking about right now. Let's just get out of here. And then he's like, they went back in to the room, right? And Pat Riley's like, what's going on, man? And he was like, get LeBron on the phone. Is he coming or not? So LeBron gets on the phone and he tells him, uh, yeah, man, I'm, yeah, I must just go ahead and I'm going back home. I'm going to sign with Cleveland and, and all this. Yeah, I just made my decision. I'm just going to go back home and try to win one for my city and all this. He had made, he put them through this whole ringer. He could have made this phone call before Pat and them even got on the uh, plane. And he did this when they was on the plane back going home. Yeah, I know they conversation. It's all verified, buddy. These are facts. I told you who was there and who weren't there. LeBron and Mavic Carter were such cowards, they didn't even show up. Don't forget to hit the like button. And definitely hit up the Cash App and support the page. You getting the real right now. We kicking the year off hot. Pat Riley got a call with LeBron. They went back home and didn't even meet with LeBron. He called him when they playing landed and said that he was signing with Cleveland. On the phone, like a coward. So Pat Riley wished him luck. He thanked him for the four years, but he was pissed off. He could they flew him out there. He made Pat Riley and his team fly all the way out to Vegas, knowing doggone well he had no intentions of signing back with the Miami Heat. Had this fake meeting set up in Las Vegas where they came out there to pitch him and he wasn't even there and didn't even have Mav Carter there. So Pat Riley called Dwayne Wade immediately and said, did you know about this? He said, no, he just told me the night before he made a decision. He's like, he's going to make an announcement that he's going back to Cleveland it's going to be in a, he did an interview and it's going to be in a magazine. So the magazine had already ran, that did the interview with LeBron already. Talking about some, I'm going home. He already did the interview like about three, four weeks before it was even published. That he had told them. So he knew already. He didn't make a decision there. He already knew what he was doing. So that's what Pat Riley was like. Oh, he's playing games. <laughs> Screw that guy. Yeah, he did an interview to my son. I'm going home. Did a whole layout, and it was done weeks ago. But he lied to Pat Riley and said, I just really made my decision right now. No, you didn't. You already had an interview printed in the magazine, and it was coming out. <laughs> it's already coming out in the paper. Tell I'm coming home. So how could you make your decision? Tell my son, I just was about 50 50 on it. I was bouncing. Then I decided, you know, I'm going to go back home, try to win a chip for my hometown. You ain't just make that decision. So he lied to Pat Riley and he wasted his time and had Pat come all the way out to Las Vegas for nothing. These are facts. Mav Carter and him weren't even there. They left, they left doggone two idiots in the room. The dude that carry his book bags around. That friend. Then they left the other friend in there, Rich Paul. So Miami Heat fans, y'all was done dirty. Uh 
okay, it was soccer. It was some reason they was down there in Vegas that he made him meet him in Las Vegas. I think it was U.S. It was USA something soccer or whatever was going on. But LeBron had to meet them in Vegas and didn't even have the decency. So when they was talking about playing Cleveland, playing the Miami Heat. Pat Riley, you know, LeBron wanted some beats again, right? He's coming back into town. Pat Riley, like, he ain't getting no, no more than to two tickets he got. Now, if anybody from the Miami Heat want to give him some tickets, that's up to y'all. Now, if Dwayne want to give up his tickets to LeBron, that's fine. But I'm not giving him no extra tickets. <laughs> I gave him the standard two tickets he's supposed to get, and he ain't getting no more. And that was that. And it's nothing against LeBron, but that's how we run things here in Miami. And sure enough, LeBron was pissed. So LeBron was, man, they finna get a sellout game because of me. Well, I ain't gonna play against the Miami Heat. Nah, how they like that? I'm gonna sit out that game. And he did. He would, Every time they played in Miami, LeBron would sit out the game. No, no, not anymore. They worked it all out. He's finally got over his ridiculousness. Right, Pat Riley don't do favoritism. He don't do no side deals. He don't do anything. He's a He's a stickler for the rules. He don't like fraternizing with other players. He, he wouldn't let Charles Oakley talk to Michael Jordan. They friends. He don't care. When you play on this team, no fraternizing. We got to play that team. I don't want to see nobody talking to nobody on the other side of the team. That's just Pat Riley. He's old school. He's rugged. That's I respect it. At least you know where a guy like that stands. Serena Williams got female athlete of the decade. So she did get it. <laughs> That's what I keep trying to tell y'all. Y'all keep saying Serena. I'm like, okay, well, Serena got it already. the games and then you saw what happened after that magic johnson hit isaiah with a with an elbow that would have had him thrown out today and they went to war so i don't know what you talking about they were not fraternizing and friends on that court they were trying to take each other out you think magic johnson is the type that's going to be friendly to you during an nba finals Magic Johnson whole thing is predicated to win it. That's the way he plays. He wanna win. Look. LeBron done a lot of things good that went his way, Miami. Nope, that was the start the game off. 
Magic Johnson knew they know each other off the court. They got him a ceremonial kiss to him. Kiss Mark McGuire, Mark McGuire too, but nobody cares about that either, huh? Start the game. And that's that. Once that ball was jumped in the air, there was no fraternizing. Isaiah and Magic almost fought in game one right after that. So the tone was set. Thanks for the cash app. I appreciate that. Boy, y'all act like some kids. I don't know. You know, it's a lot of sh shifty evidence to support the facts. You know, all his hair fell out all of a sudden. Real fast. LeBron used to have hair. Then, you know, he started going to the biogenics. And after the biogenics, you know, we all know what happened after that. No more hair. Well, Pat Riley has always been the guy that you could... He's always been a stand-up guy, but him and Shaq got had the same problem. All while Shaq was there, he never got along with Pat Riley because Pat Riley was a stickler to the rules. And if you were bending the rules a little bit, Pat, you and Pat Riley weren't gonna get along. That's just it. Shaq wanted. Shaq is the kind of guy who comes from L.A. where it's laxed. Miami is entirely different. It's like, look, we run things like a boot camp here. You can have fun, and no one's gonna stop you from having fun, but these are the rules. No one player is above team. Like, we don't have a superstar treatment here. Everybody gets treated the same way. And that was the way Pat Riley did it. He's like, when he was with the Lakers, Magic got treated the same way. They had no special rules for Magic Johnson. He's like, man, they had Kareem was the big star of the team. He was the captain. Whatever he said, go. Then they turned everything over to Magic. <clears throat> but that's what it was. You know, it was no other, no in-between, no wiggle room. They'll figure it out one day. Everybody figure it out. They get it together. That's one thing for certain. When I say people get it together, they get it together. One way or another. But Pat Riley and LeBron come... How am I sabotaging his character? I'm telling you what went down, what happened, when it when it happened. I'm just a messenger.
what King James did. I don't get it. What you mean? What what did he do now? Absolutely. Absolutely, I think that. Well, they've been stealing players from other agents. They've been playing by their own rules for so long. Yeah, so <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Sharon Reed, huh? I'm just now getting back into the office. Getting back into the lab. Bear down. <laughs> oh, you know it. 